Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago, I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing boat for the price of $1. And since then, I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. Today, we're gonna to talk about the timeline of the project, the jobs that have to be done before the boat is brought out of the shed and launched. We're gonna talk about uh, when that launch might actually be. We're gonna talk about how you can actually come and see the boat. And we're gonna see some carving work on the bulwark planks. Now you may know that the bulwark planks are the uh, planks that go above the deck uh, on the stanchions and make the sort of fence around the boat uh, and some boats like this one have a cove line uh, sometimes that's in the hull planking itself on this boat it's in the bulwark so that's just a, a line that's carved into the length of the planking and it's just a little added detail this boat has some shapes carved at the very front and the very back of that line but the first thing I'm going to do is actually cut out the shape of the line itself. And I'm going to do that by using a router with an enlarged base. And that's just going to run up against the covering board, which should describe a nice fair line that follows the shear of the boat. So once the cove line was cut with the router on the port side of the boat, I went ahead and started with the carving. And I started with the shape at the bow of the boat on the port side uh, because it's a simpler shape than the one on the stern and it's been quite a long time since I've done any carving. Now I'm trying to copy the original carving from when Tally Ho was built in 1910 uh, and I do have some photos of it, although they're not terribly good quality and it is shown in Albert Stranger's drawing as well. The cove line as it reaches the bow of the boat splits in two in a sort of leafy organic shape and then just in front of that there's an arrow pointing forwards. We actually took inspiration from this design for some of the motifs that we've repeated in the interior joinery in the boat. So the vents above some of the cabinetry feature a very similar arrow scaled down a little bit. To try and make sure that this shape is the same on both sides of the boat, I first drew it on a very thin piece of plywood and then cut it out using a bandsaw so I could use it as a sort of template. Now we're obviously at a very exciting point in the project and there's a lot of stuff going on and it seems like stuff is happening very fast, which it is. However, a lot of people seem to be wondering if we're nearly finished, if we might be launching soon and I'm afraid to say that there is a lot more work to do before we can even think about that. Now behind me on this board is a very simplified, condensed and incomplete list of some of the jobs which have to be done still and there are really just too many to list. We're sort of at the point of the project where you're 90% done and then you start to realize that there's another 90% left to do. And every day I'm just noticing and coming across more jobs which have to be done and which get put on that list. Now, of course, we could put Tally Ho in the water. She would float, hopefully. But if we did that soon, there would still be a lot of work left to do while the boat is in the water. And doing that work when the boat is in the water, far away from all your tools or your bench tools, out in the elements, bobbing around, all the work gets exponentially harder and takes exponentially longer. Of course, a lot of projects have deadlines for all sorts of different reasons and those people have to push to meet those deadlines. I feel very, very lucky that we have a little bit more flexibility here. Uh, although I am in a rush to get the boat finished, it doesn't have to be in the water by a set date. 
and I feel so lucky to have this incredible workshop, uh, having the boat right next door in the big hangar and having such an amazing team here. And everyone has their tools right here. They know where everything is. Everyone knows how everything works. We have a very efficient and really fun, awesome work environment. And I really don't want to waste that. I want to do as much work as we can in this space before the boat leaves. Speaking of how lucky and grateful I feel, uh, I just have to make it clear that all of this workshop, the tools, the space, the team, is all thanks to people watching these videos. It's thanks to you guys who are watching and supporting these videos. So that feeling of incredible gratefulness is directed out there at you. Now I'm going to talk more about future plans in just a little bit, but first of all, we're gonna see the sketching out of the design for the carving at the stern of the boat. So again, with the carving at the stern of the boat, we had a few pictures to reference, and I was pretty lucky to have one very good picture which shows pretty much the whole carving, and I was able to use that to get a scale and just basically sketch out freehand the shape using a few basic measurements from that drawing and just checking it a lot by eye. This detail was also drawn by Albert Strange on the original drawings, so I feel it's very much a part of the boat uh, and important to try and replicate. I really don't have a lot of carving experience, but Wana, the timber that the bulwarks are planked with, is a uh, very nice wood to carve, it's quite soft and works pretty well. And uh, I used a Japanese style gouge and just followed the lines I'd drawn as best as I could. I do really like the design, it's quite organic, it's sort of reminiscent of leaves and branches, but it's sort of abstract as well. Now eventually, of course, the bulwarks will stay white, uh, but the actual carved areas will get some kind of color in them, uh, so they'll be darker and more visible. It has been suggested that we use gold leaf in all the carvings, um, but as well as costing quite a bit of money, uh, I fear that that might come across as a bit ostentatious, so uh, I'm still thinking about it. So you guys know now that the boat isn't getting launched any minute or any day. It's a little ways away. But what are the more long-term future plans for the boat? Well, in the near future, we're gonna be having an open house event, which I'm gonna talk about in a bit. Uh, and then sometime after that, uh, this year, the boat will be coming out of the shed and into the yard. And at that point, we'll be able to put the mast in and start rigging the boat. Later on, of course, it'll get launched and hopefully over the winter we'll be doing some of the sea trials dialing in some of the systems getting the rig more set up and so on hopefully next spring the boat will be pretty well set up we'll have been sailing it around and it'll be ready for some bigger trips now that's a pretty vague timeline and it's definitely subject to change and i've described it all um, without much emotion but actually talking about launching the boat and even getting it out the shed and putting the mast in is incredibly exciting <laughs> for me uh, whether it's three months away or a year away, uh, we are getting a lot closer. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. There's still a lot of daily struggles in all aspects of this operation. But as I keep saying, we have a great team, we're having fun, and I'm so grateful to be doing it. 
Now, after the boat is in the water and sailing, I do plan and hope to continue making videos. And those videos will be more about sailing operations, repair, maintenance, and the adventures and travels that we have along the way. There's going to be some big voyages, some big adventures, and uh, although routes and stuff are not set in stone, I've got a lot of exciting ideas. One thing that I can say for sure is that I intend to sail this boat uh, over long distances and for a long time. And at some point in those voyages, I intend to sail to England and take part in a fastnet race. Of course, Tally Ho won the fastnet race in 1927. But first, we've got to finish. And so going back to the carving, after finishing the carving on the port side of the boat, I went over and transferred the image to the starboard side of the boat. And to do that and get the scale correct and keep them pretty much the same, I used chalk uh, and some paper and just did a sort of chalk rubbing of the image and then transferred it over and pressed it onto the books to make sure it was the same shape and in the same place. Now I mentioned earlier that we're going to be having an open house here soon and I want to give a little more detail about that. The plan at the moment is that it's going to be on the 10th of September, which is during the Wooden Boat Festival here in Port Townsend, Washington, USA. I'll be publishing more details nearer the time, but for now, if you want to make travel or accommodation plans, the 10th of September is the date. Now we're not inside the Port Townsend Wooden Boat Festival, uh, so you don't technically need a boat festival ticket to come and see Tally Ho, but I do highly recommend that you visit the festival either for the day or for the whole weekend. There's a lot of really cool wooden boat stuff going on over there and it's just at the other end of town. For now though, I really enjoyed doing the carving work that you saw in this video. Uh, it was very fun uh, and really cool to be able to replicate and remake that original detail. Of course, there's been so much going on here over the last week and months. Uh, everyone is really busy and doing really great work, but of course we can't show it all in one video. We have to uh, zoom in a little bit to actually show the story of each job one or two at a time. Soon though, if you guys think it would be a good idea, I would like to do another sort of walk around tour of the boat showing the progress of all the different jobs which are going on at the moment. For now though, thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means we're able to keep on doing this work and we're able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.